The robust Australopithecines, Australopithecus boisei from East Africa, Australopithecus robustus from South Africa, didn't give rise to us. They most likely are not ancestral to living humans today, at least not directly. And yet despite the fact that they're a lineage, a side branch on the human evolutionary story, they potentially have a tremendous amount of value for our understanding of hominid evolution. The Austro robust Australopithecines persisted from at least two and a half million years ago to about 1.2 or 1.3 million years ago, we find the latest evidence of them. So they are a lineage that persisted for at least a million years, and yet they eventually died off. And in that extinction, we potentially have a lot of valuable lessons. That gives us a comparative model for understanding the evolution, in fact, the origin of Homo, the topic we'll be talking about next. When we look at the Australopithecines, the robust Australopithecines, we can see clear evidence of dietary changes. These hyper-robust dentition, these jaws that are themselves very huge and that have teeth that are enormous in size, some of them almost getting sort of the size of a coin if you imagine placing a coin on top of them in terms of their overall dimensions, clearly suggest significant evolutionary change in the robust lineage and change that perhaps it's tempting to think corresponds to some degree of specialization. That they went on an evolutionary route, moving into some kind of dietary specialization. Although the attempt to reconstruct the diet of the Australopithecines, even the robust Australopithecines, has proven very challenging, uh, and even though actually we currently think that they may have had a fairly diverse diet, the robust Australopithecines, despite having these huge teeth, may not have been specialized feeders. They may have been fairly broad feeders, capable of doing a lot. But nevertheless, the large dentition, these huge masticatory apparatuses, if we look at this, we can see the clear evolutionary prioritization of mastication in these specimens. Whether or not their diet wasn't specialized, clearly their evolution was evolving towards a more specialized condition. They were devoting a lot of resources, not to their brain necessarily, but to the size of their chewing apparatus. If we look at the space again for the temporalis muscle right here, there was an enormous chewing apparatus here. There was an enormous chewing apparatus occupying these and operating these huge jaws, these huge teeth. This is in contrast to what we're going to see next week. The robust Australopithecines are important in part because they give us a comparative analog for the evolution of Homo. Whereas they were evolving towards a more specialized condition, again, even if that specialized condition doesn't correspond to a very neat, narrow diet, humans, our lineage, the genus Homo, appear to be going in a different direction. Rather than focusing resources on a physical structure, what we'll see next week when we talk about the origins of the genus Homo is a focusing of resources on a very plastic element, something that's capable of producing a lot of different kinds of morphologies and responses, that being the brain. So we see a contrasting story, one lineage where the teeth get larger and larger and larger, and another lineage, which we'll start talking about next week, where the brain gets larger and larger and larger, and everything else pretty much, the teeth included, gets smaller. Now, it's also important to recognize that when we think about Australopithecus boisei and Australopithecus robustus, they weren't static. They change across time. So when we look at the beginning of the robust lineage in South Africa and the end of that robust lineage, we see evidence of change, some evidence in even of brain size increase. So although there's this distinguishing and different pattern between the early evolution of Homo and the evolution of the robust Australopithecines, that doesn't mean there aren't some parallels as well. It's possible the same evolutionary forces that give rise to our lineage, the lineage Homo, were also having an evolutionary effect on the robust Australopithecines as well. So again, the fact that we have an abundant assemblage of robust Australopithecines coming from East Africa and Southern Africa gives us an important source of understanding questions about variation. Variation in space, variation across time, the variation between East African varieties and Southern African varieties. Maybe this is species, maybe this isn't species, maybe there are fundamentally different genus altogether. But it's an important as a way of understanding what variation looks like in the fossil record. And it gives us the opportunity to have a comparison, not drawn from living species, but that runs at the same time in the same place as other fossil hominins, the ones that ultimately do give rise to us. So the robust Australopithecines, although they're an evolutionary dead end, are not a failure of a story. They give us a huge amount of value for understanding the overall pattern of evolution that we see in humans and understanding our own evolutionary past as well.